Amanda Gonzalez was born on December 8, 1981, and grew up in Madisonville, Texas. Amanda had a reputation in high school for caring and sticking up for her classmates if they were bullied. In 2000, after graduating from high school, she decided to join the Army in order to pay for college, where she wanted to pursue a career as a children's physical therapist. In 2001, 19-year-old Amanda was four to five months pregnant and stationed at a former U.S. Army base in Hanau, Germany. She was on her first Army assignment and was assigned to the 127th Aviation Support Battalion as a cook. However, around eight months after arriving, tragedy struck. On November 5, 2001, Amanda failed to report for work. Soldiers went to her room inside the barracks and knocked on the door, but there was no answer. So they broke the door down and found her body. She had sadly been beaten and strangled to death. Unfortunately, the case would go unsolved for the next 21 years. During this time, the military would not release any information about the investigation. Finally, in February 2023, a man by the name of Shannon L. Wilkerson was arrested in Florida for her murder. He was a former Armed Forces member who was stationed at the Hanau base alongside Amanda. He even attended her memorial service on the base. 42-year-old Wilkerson was discharged from the U.S. Army on July 31, 2004, and from the U.S. Army Reserve on June 12, 2007. He was from Alabama and ran a gym called the Cardio Zone in 2015. He's being charged with first-degree murder under the Military Extraterritorial Jurisdiction Act, which gives the U.S. federal courts jurisdiction over crimes committed outside the United States by former members of the armed forces. Wilkerson has currently pleaded not guilty and is awaiting trial. Hopefully, we will soon learn of the evidence that led them to her killer 21 years later. At the age of 37, Linda Fields was a mother of three living in Racine, Wisconsin. On February 24, 2000, her body was discovered under a pine tree in the front yard of a home at 1132 Lake Avenue by someone walking their dog. She had sadly been strangled to death and male DNA was recovered from her body. The DNA profile was uploaded to the Wisconsin DNA data bank, but no matches were found. Investigators initially had five suspects, but they were all eventually cleared through DNA testing. Unfortunately, Linda's murder would remain unsolved for the next 23 years. In 2021, the FBI became involved and enlisted the help of Othram Labs. In January 2022, investigators performed a familial DNA search and were able to identify a person of interest. That person had a brother living in the area. From his DNA sample, they were able to determine that the DNA from the crime scene belonged to their father, 66-year-old Lucas Alonzo of Birmingham, Alabama. Unfortunately, Alonzo had left Birmingham before investigators could make contact and moved to Zion, Illinois. Investigators then got word in February 2023 that Alonzo was back working in Racine where the murder occurred. With a warrant in hand for his DNA, they performed a traffic stop on a vehicle that Alonzo was riding in and collected a DNA sample from him. The results showed that his DNA matched the DNA collected from Linda's body. On March 6, 2023, he was arrested at his place of employment and charged with first-degree murder. Alonzo then confessed to the murder. He told investigators that he and Linda were drinking at a bar in the area of 7th Street and Center Street in Racine. He claims they left the bar together and got a ride to the lakefront one block from Main Street. He said that during sex, he kept trying to strangle her. Linda asked him to stop, but he didn't. She then became angry and began kicking and slapping him. This pissed him off, so he choked her and left her under the tree, where she was ultimately found. He claims he thought she was still alive when he left. Linda's son, Carl, spent years searching for answers and is now hopeful for some long overdue justice in his mother's murder.
Noel Kinsey Russo grew up in San Mateo County, California, and in 1962, at the age of 16, Noel was a local beauty pageant winner and was named Miss Burlingame. Noel would marry twice, but both would end in divorce. In 1983, 37-year-old Noel was living in an apartment at 196 Avram Avenue in Ronert Park, California, with her 18-year-old son. She was also enrolled at Santa Rosa Junior College in the Bay Area. Unfortunately, her friends were constantly worried about her trusting nature and the fact that she was known to hitchhike around town. On June 24, 1983, Noel got into a fight with her boyfriend and went to spend the night at a friend's home in Santa Rosa. Late the next day, the friend drove her to the old courthouse square in downtown Santa Rosa, where she planned to take a bus back to her home in Ronert Park. However, after being dropped off that night, Noel was never seen again. It's believed that Noel had missed the last bus of the night and called a ride with someone. Sadly, on June 27th, her nude body was found by a seven-year-old boy behind a real estate office at the intersections of Petaluma Hill Road and East Katati Avenue in the then unincorporated area of Ronert Park. She had tragically been beaten to death with a piece of lumber taken from a nearby woodpile. Surprisingly, investigators had a suspect by the name of Alfredo Caratero but they didn't have a way to prove it at the time, and the case would remain unsolved for the next 40 years. Thankfully, the killer had left his DNA behind at the crime scene, so there was definitely hope, but they would have to wait for technology to catch up. Between 2010 and 2023, investigators submitted multiple items from evidence to the Santa Clara County Crime Lab and the Serological Research Institute for Forensic Analysis. Finally, in 2023, they were able to match the DNA from the crime scene to Caratera, and he was arrested on October 2, 2023, in Lakeport, California, for her murder. Caratera had prior convictions for stolen property and drug possession. He was also involved in a domestic violence civil case in September 1985, about two years after Noel's murder. It remains unknown if he knew Noel or randomly picked her up that night. Susan Marcia Rose was born on August 19, 1955, in Johnstown, Pennsylvania, and went by Susie. She was described as a very sweet person who was intelligent and artistic. Susie attended Richland High School and, after graduation, enrolled at the Greater Johnston Vocational Technical School. In 1976, she decided, with a push from her family, to go to Boston to experience city life. In 1979, at the age of 24, Susie was living on Dartmouth Street in Boston. On Monday, October 29th, she went to a bar that she was known to frequent as often as five times a week near Charles Circle. She would usually ride her bicycles around town, but on this night, Susie didn't have hers. This night was different because Susie was known for coming to the bar alone, but had a male companion on this night, who she claimed was her ex-boyfriend. However, her ex left the bar about 11.30 p.m. Susie continued what she usually did, drinking coffee sombreros, a cocktail made with coffee liqueur and cream or milk. She was also known for playing pinball. A worker at the bar said that Susie was quiet and usually stayed till closing. He said she would typically meet friends at the bar, but would usually leave alone and would always take a cab home. After leaving that night, she went to a male friend's apartment in the Back Bay area, which was two or three blocks from where she lived, to borrow a cape as part of a Halloween costume she planned to wear to an upcoming party. He said she left his apartment around 4 a.m. and assumed she took a cab home. After that, she was never seen alive again. Sadly, at 7 a.m. on October 30th, construction workers found Susie's body in the Back Bay apartment building that was in the process of being converted to condominiums. She was nude except for a lavender sweater that was pulled up to her shoulders. She had been sexually assaulted and beaten to death. Investigators determined the murder weapon was a hammer. Also, the cape she had borrowed from her friend was found near her body. 
In 1979, investigators had no suspects, but by 1981, two years after her murder, a 23-year-old man was arrested after two witnesses came forward and implicated him in the crime, with one claiming he actually confessed. However, none of this was true, and he was eventually acquitted. At that point, her murder would remain unsolved for the next 40 years. In August of 2023, a 69-year-old Oregon man named John Michael Ermer entered an FBI office in Portland, Oregon and made a chilling confession. He wanted to confess to several murders. He claimed that one of those murders occurred the night before Halloween in 1979 when he met a red-headed woman at a Boston skating rink whose name he didn't know. It's unclear if Armour was with Susie the entire night of the murder or if she met up with him after leaving the friend's apartment. Armour disclosed to investigators that the pair later walked to a property along Boston's Charles River. They were going to explore an abandoned apartment building at 285 Beacon Street. Shortly after entering the building, which was under construction, Armour told investigators he picked up a hammer and repeatedly struck Susie in the head with it. He then sexually assaulted her before fleeing the next day to New York. Authorities collected his DNA sample, which matched DNA samples found at the crime scene. Ermer served 30 years in prison for another murder in California using a hammer and a firearm just a few years after Susie's murder. It's been a long time, but Susie's family is thankful to finally have some answers. Jess Wind Reed, who went by Wendy, and her husband Stephen Reed lived at the Alton Woods Apartments in Concord, New Hampshire, and both worked in the humanitarian sector. Stephen was originally from Concord, while Wendy was a native of West Africa. In 1979, Stephen spent four years in the Peace Corps in West Africa, where he taught English. In 1982, he returned to Washington, D.C., where he met Wendy, who was attending college on a sports scholarship. He then worked 30 years for the U.S. Agency for International Development while Wendy helped refugees adjust to their new life in the United States. In 2019, the couple retired and settled back into Stephen's hometown of Concord, New Hampshire. By 2022, they were still enjoying their retirement when tragedy struck. At 2.22 p.m. on April 18, 2022, the couple left their apartment and headed on foot to the Broken Ground Trails. After leaving, they were sadly never seen alive again. Three days later, when Stephen missed his weekly tennis game, their loved ones reported them missing. On Thursday night, April 21st, someone found their bodies on the Marsh Loop Trail. They had both been shot to death before being dragged from the trail and covered with debris, leaves, and branches and baking soda. Two days later, on April 20th, detectives met a man living in the woods near the crime scene who identified himself as Arthur Kelly. When they returned two days later, they found his campsite abandoned but found spent shell casings similar to those found at the crime scene. A witness came forward who had been hiking on the trail systems and reported hearing gunshots on the day of the murders. She later saw a young man, matching Arthur Kelly's description, holding a shopping bag, looking into the woods toward where their bodies were ultimately found. Other residents reported seeing the same man in the area around November 2021, but after the murder, he disappeared. Investigators were eventually able to determine that Arthur Kelly was an alias and the man's real name was Logan Clegg, who had spent some time working at the McDonald's on Loudoun Road in Concord. They also determined that he had bought a bus ticket out of state using one of his aliases. They also learned of a second campsite near the murders that had been burned. When they investigated that campsite, they saw propane tanks, bullet casings, and other items and were able to connect them to Clegg through purchases he made at Walmart. For the next few months, investigators combed through digital data from Stephen Reed's cell phone and Gmail account and videos at local stores for evidence linking the burnt tent site to Clegg. They found a video of him being at Shaw's grocery store about 30 minutes before the murders, heading toward the trails. 
They also connected transactions for an illegally purchased Glock handgun and two magazines made in Vermont to his alias Arthur Kelly. After fleeing Concord, Clegg traveled to Maine and then Vermont, where he was arrested in mid-October 2022, not far from where the Reeds previously lived before retirement. When arrested, he was living in a tent in the woods around the trail. Come to find out, Clegg had fatally stabbed a man in Seattle, Washington, but claimed self-defense and escaped the charges. His motive remains unclear in the Reed murders, but he had a hair-triggered temper, according to people he worked with, and possibly showed signs of being a serial killer. Plus, Wendy and Stephen didn't have their wallets on them, but Clegg might not have known that until after killing them. On October 23, 2023, Clegg was found guilty of second-degree murder for both Wendy and Stephen. He also had five other felony charges against him. He hasn't been sentenced yet, but could receive anywhere from 20 to 40 years in prison. Family members of the victims have expressed immense gratitude toward the investigators who brought Clegg to justice. Thank you.